All right. Hi there. My name is Jessica Crow, and I am the founder of Apogee. And Apogee is a change management training, coaching, and consulting firm. And this is our Change Leader Speaker Series. And I'm really excited to have Jen Thompson here with me. She is a principal consultant at Vital Solutions, and her background is very diverse in terms of her education and experiences and her training. And so I wanted her to come on the show and talk with me. I actually met Jen through the ACMP, which is the Association of Change Management Professionals, and was just so impressed with her kindness for one, um, but also her her story. So Jen, thank you so much for being on the show. We'll call it with me. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. So what you do with Vital, um, your background, kind of how you got into all the things that you have. If you go to her LinkedIn profile, you'll see what I'm talking about. But <laughs> tell us tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. I, um, as you mentioned, I'm a principal consultant at Vital Solutions. Uh, so I work with organizations on primarily business management problems, um, helping them with organizational change management uh, initiatives, as well as project management. And our organization takes a little bit more of a technology focus. So um, we do work within mergers and acquisitions, helping with uh, post-merger integration work. We do system selections and implementations. And my background is actually focused around our third service offering, which we call XMO. Um, and that's focused on helping organizations um, mature and optimize their project management offices, change management offices, transformation, whatever, the right. X of MO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what our organization does. We're a Denver-based small boutique co uh, company and uh, small but mighty for yeah. sure. Yeah, but you weren't always in project management, change management. You're trained at your education, your background, engineer, right, by training. Um, and then yeah. were you ever an engineer uh, before getting into project management? Or did you take that education and go into the project management world right away? Yeah, so my academic background is engineering. It's actually biomedical engineering, biocomputer engineering. So it's <laughs> very, very long title. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't do anything per se with that degree um, in engineering within the medical space or mm -hmm. med devices space, but I did work within um, a consulting firm early on in my or in my career doing um, system implementations for mm -hmm. technical writing departments, and I did a lot of programming, computer programming and stuff for for them. Um, and then I did work within a medical device organization doing that. Um, gotcha. At that time, then I I pursued um, an advanced degree. I thought I wanted to do medical imaging. And then I took a class on organizational leadership and I just fell in love with that. So actually changed my master's degree to focus on um, organizational leadership. Oh, that um, is so cool. So part of yeah. my academic background as well. So then you would, okay, so organizational leadership, and then somewhere along the way, you became a PMP, Six Sigma, change management certified, all these things. Like what order did it happen in? And was <laughs> it based on the role that you were in? Or was it more like, I really am enjoying this space. Therefore, I want to acquire more knowledge and skills in this area. Yeah, actually, I started with Six Sigma, uh, actually, back when I was in college doing a co-op internship program. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, with GE Medical. Um, and so they uh, put me through the Six Sigma program because that's what GE yeah, <laughs> is yeah. known for. Um, and then actually, uh, fast forward, uh, probably five or eight years or so, I was um, leading the project management office at Children's Hospital Colorado. Oh, cool. And um, funny story is I was encouraging a lot of my team to go and get their PMPs as part of their professional development. And I thought, gosh, I really should probably go get mine <laughs> <laughs> if I'm encouraging all of them to do it too. Yeah. So that was the catalyst for uh, me getting my PMP. Um, so I remember late night studying with two small kids, but eventually passed that test. Yes, and it's a big, it was great. A big training. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. And then ProSci uh, was also something that Children's Hospital Colorado uh, PMO adopted as a standard yep. uh, platform, a standard methodology that we would be using for the PMO cool. um, and for the organization. So a group of us went through that training as well. Now, which is great. Now, which, because of the limbs here being change leader, so thinking more in the context of change management, how would you, how would you describe um, your 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 skills right now? So you've got a, a a lot of experience, a lot of training. When it comes to engaging and interacting with clients, which skills do you find that you're leveraging the most uh, in your kind of your day to day? And and it doesn't have to be change management. I'm just, you know, obviously <laughs> just a part of Actually, your skills. Yeah. I mean, it may be cliche, but, you know, I think of having this toolkit, right? Of yeah. Whatever you need at any given time, uh, you kind of lean on on your different methodologies. Yeah. And so if there needs to be an emphasis on really rigid project management, you know, we put together project plans and charters and we have really solid status reporting and governance. Um, if there needs to be more emphasis on change management and making sure that people are adopting change and, you know, how we get folks from um, one, one place to a future state, um, you know, I definitely lean on the change management side of things more. And I actually feel like I tend to lean more towards change management yeah. as my initial go-to yeah. uh, toolkit than, than the other things, because I think that's what really drives, um, you know, drives a lot of the initiatives is understanding the vision, understanding why you would be doing something mm -hmm. and making sure that everybody else really is on board with that as well. So yeah. if you can't articulate that, there's no reason why you would put together a project plan and force it through. Right. doesn't work very well. It's painful if that happens. So uh, in change management, project management circles, there is talk around, are they two distinct roles? Can project managers do change management. What are your thoughts on that? Um, is it a is it a one role? Does it make more sense to have two different roles? Does it depend on the type of change and the size of the change? Like, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think it's that last piece. Uh, I think it really depends on the scope of the change. Um, when I was leading the project management office and with other clients I've worked with. Um, you know, we, we were working on building out everybody's project management or all the project managers capabilities to incorporate change management within their projects. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we were carving out specific individuals as change managers to help with the big electronic medical record system implementations that were organization wide yeah. or, um, you know, large um, new office setups and making sure that all of the folks that were moving from one um, one office to another, one facility to another, that they were all good to go uh, with the new state. So I think that, that those large initiatives really can be um, good examples of having separate change managers that are really mm -hmm. focused on, on that aspect. Because the project manager that's overseeing those big programs and those big initiatives, um, they are not going to have the capacity to right. to flip and to switch their mindset, um, you know, as quickly as they need to to do the, both the project management and the change management. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, PMI or you know, get within the PME. PMP training and getting that certification, they do include a component of change management into that training. Is that correct? Or so I was reviewing maybe a it little bit. It might be in the new one. I don't yeah. know if I did much of maybe a little bit. Well, I was my, looking back. My, there's a, an I article I read from PMI. Ago. Yeah, maybe. Well, so I guess the question I have then is if you're a project management professional, is it worthwhile to get training in change management so you understand that side of the the work the importance of all the things that you just described the vision getting people bought into what's happening helping them understand why or is it okay to not have that training which is you know the answer can be yes and rely on individuals who do have that knowledge what are your what are your thoughts there 
I absolutely think there should be cross um, pollination on those yeah. skill sets. Um, one uh, one thing that stands out for me in particular is benefits realization mm-hmm. um, and making sure that there is some sort of way to measure uh, the success of an initiative. And that is definitely an overlap between project management and change management. Mm-hmm. Um, it may have a little bit of a different lens between those two things, but I think that within change management, um, there's a lot of work on articulating what those KPIs are and those success metrics mm-hmm. and um, everything that you can do to prove out that the change is, you know, well adopted and well received. And at the same time, benefits realization within the context of project management is, you know, more sometimes more focus on ROI, right? but it's a lot of times ROI is not necessarily the quantitative ROI. It's also the quanti- qualitative, right. which is a lot of times change management, right? And the yeah. people side of things. So yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. That's just one example of, you know, having the mindset of both change management and project management in for one person is really helpful. What about, okay, so now let's say you're a, you're, you've got a change management certification. Does it, would it be helpful to go and get PMP certified? And I asked this maybe a little bit leading the witness because the PMP (laughs) versus your change management certification, the amount of time it takes is quite different, but what are your thoughts on that? Um, so it's interesting because I think that change management is a newer methodology compared to project management. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I will admit that certifications are great to have, but the application of the skills are really where, you know, where you're going to succeed as an individual. Um, So there are a lot of opportunities out there to get some uh, project management certifications. Um, and I do think that it's it's worthwhile, but I don't know that you have to go and get PMP certified mm-hmm. uh, as a change manager. I think that you could, if you are, if you want to do project management in the context of change management, I think that there's ways you can learn about good project management methodologies and approaches without having to get the PMP certification. Yeah. Um, I agree with you actually. I, yeah. I think that the PMP certification is, it's pretty cool. Like it tests your knowledge mm-hmm. on project management for sure. Um, but I don't know that it's always applicable <laughs> right. knowledge. Right. And in certain contexts, I mean, in, in different types of projects and organizations, that makes a lot of sense to me. What other, you know, what other skills? So project management, change management aside, you're an individual who has responsibility for implementing strategic programs, maybe as a, you know, role aside, what other skills, what other um, training would be helpful for someone who is responsible for large scale, leading large scale change or leading teams, right? Whether it's people or projects, how, what are you looking at in terms of where you might go next with your continual learning, if that's even on your radar? Like, What are some other oh, skills that are top of mind? It's lifelong learning for me. You always yeah. have to, <laughs> you always have to continue to improve yourself. Um, so I think for me, um, communication, both mm-hmm. written and verbal, is really important. Um, and I know for me, going through my master's degree and my master's program, that really helped a lot in mm-hmm. knowing and learning how to uh, better articulate uh, my thoughts, as well as just, you know, become a better writer so that you mm-hmm. can um, work with everybody throughout the organization up down and sideways um so I think communication is very important um there's a bunch of soft skills um that are are needed on both change management and project management and process improvement Um, I guess that process improvement I haven't mentioned at all yeah that's an important one yeah I think I think having that mindset is really helpful um knowing how to um, translate, um, 
either functions or specific users needs and requirements into into a process is only helps with um, identifying where where they are at today and where they want to go into the future and saying okay this is how we get there yeah um, from a process improvement perspective so those are a couple of areas I think I would uh, focus on is good communication and process improvement. Yeah, I see that. I'm being... a weird person. I like to do swim lane process mapping. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I that it it is it's important to have that ability to do that because it does come in handy and it helps people visualize how things will work. And, you know, it could be written, it could be a process map. I mean, I like those tools too, because of that, I can see things in a way Mm -hmm. and you can convey them in a way that resonates with people. They can really see the arrows moving from one, one area to the next, um, in terms of the process. Um, I've also from individuals who are change management, project management professionals, some of the customer experience, the UX, uh, UE design, right? That, that having that, and then maybe that's more IT related thinking about software development, but has that come up for you with any clients where having that understanding of how to um, work with end users in that way to come up with some of you know the, the user stories? Is that a useful skill that you've seen in your firm or do you really see it more specific to yes, in this context, it makes sense. Or as a change management professional, this would be helpful because then you'd have a different appreciation for the value of the journey mapping and all of those things that could come with that. Yeah. I I mean, all of that is really key. I would say the UX design is really more of a subcomponent of product, man- mm-hmm. product management, product yeah. design. Mm-hmm. So um in terms of um, other skills that would be helpful to learn um, that we often see is that product management or product ownership mm-hmm. um, skill set. And, and it may kind of be focused more on UX design, or it may be more focused on like the technical product management. Um, but with all that said, understanding how to, um, and this got, kind of gets into the agile side of things, mm-hmm. how to articulate um, initiatives and um, features and user stories and things like that, and how to write those um, in the context of what a user would want to see or experience mm-hmm. within a product, I think is very helpful Um as another set of skills. Um, And, and that's definitely an exciting place to go. And so if you layer on, you know, product management, project management, change management, all of those different components, you'd be pretty good powerhouse of skills to offer. (laughs) Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, What do you love about change management? Oh, that's a great question. Um, for me, I work with a lot of executives and I think it's working with them on articulating the vision and the strategy mm-hmm. and um, just making sure that they're kind of being mindful about where they're going. And it's not just a rapid fire. Hey, let's do this today and that tomorrow. It's trying to get them to think through, you know, why they want to to move one direction or another yeah Um, so yeah I'm working with a client right now and 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 they're going through a lot of changes um and and they have a lot of folks that are coming and going within their organization so uh they have some directions that they're trying to set and working with them on on getting a few layers deeper into the, well, why do you want to go that direction from a technology or security perspective will help folks to better adopt that moving forward and not just say, we're doing this, you know, because I want to. (laughs) I love that you have that opportunity and you're working with clients that early in the process. I've always viewed change management as a very strategic role and because of its ability to inform the decision-making at that point in the process, 
where I've seen change management functions struggle is they're brought in after the decision is made and all the things that you just talked about, you know, wasn't discussed, right? It was, we made this decision. This is our investment. Now go figure out how to make it work with our end users versus why are we doing this? How does it all fit together? Does it align with the big picture vision? So I love that. Yeah. Um, that's why I like it too. <laughs> you just get a lot more buy-in and a lot more motivation from the people who have to go do the work. Yeah, they, if they are all bought into the, the idea and the objective and um, understand like, well, we'll sustain as an organization because we're going to get you know, funding for the work that we're doing, then they can be like, great, then I'll have a job moving yeah. forward, you know? Yeah. But, <laughs> so. And it's hard to, uh, you know, if you're giving them something they need and want, it's, it's always a better experience overall. It is funny how many firms, um, you know, they, they make these decisions and they, they want their change management leaders to go out and, and figure out how to make it work after the fact. So hopefully if you're watching this and you're a decision maker in your organization, bring your change management people in before you make push the button to to buy <laughs> or whatever it is, write the check because this is a it'll it'll pay dividends in the long run yeah. for the organization and the employees. And you know, before um we even hit record on this, you and I were talking about mergers and acquisitions and how important this having change management at have a seat at the table of those conversations is because it's that is such hard work, right? Bringing companies, different cultures and individuals together. And it's not necessarily a product you're selling, right? You want them to use, but it's how do you bring these two different, you know, entities together and make one when they're probably very different to begin with. And so um, right. that's where change management. Well, like there's just so much talent out there these days that are kind of the purpose for mergers yeah. and acquisitions. Um, you know, you think of data scientists or something where it's not necessarily a widget or a product that you're trying to acquire and um, build into your own organization, but it's the it's the knowledge and the skill set of the people that you're trying to get to come in because there's maybe a shortage yeah. of that knowledge and that skill set. And so, um, you know, making sure that there is some acknowledgement around, well, why are they successful as a company? Um, and their culture, and then making sure that that's adopted or, you know, um, thought about when when you go through the acquisition versus just saying, hey, we're purchasing you and you have to assimilate to right. our way of doing things. Um, I think that's that's really important for organizations who are going through that process to consider. And change management, I think, is the it's the sweet sauce for yeah. <laughs> making sure that that's done correctly. Yeah, definitely. What about okay? So now thinking about that and having uh, you know change management have a seat at the table. What are your thoughts on having change management as a standalone function or a capability versus integrated within? different teams, right? I'm seeing it in HR, IT, transformation. What are your thoughts on having it be its own separate group? I think, so th we were talking about this earlier too, and yeah. I think it's it's a little tricky. Um, my first thought goes to, again, I think organizational change management is a newer concept than like project management. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I believe that there will be a need for more standalone functions of change management. Um, but I think it'll take a little bit more time to articulate the, um, value proposition for, for why organizational change management should be, um, you know, a standard set of t tools, templates, um, technology, a, you know, specific skills um, matrix or skills competency uh, model that you focus on, things like that. Um, that said, you know, it, it will partner very closely with project management mm -hmm. and with, you know, a process improvement organization, if you have that. And um, so, I, I do think that it could be standalone, um, but I think there's a maturity curve that it needs to, to, go to take to get through there. Yeah. 
if you were to wave a magic wand, like if, if change management, you know, thinking about advancing it up the maturity curve or different levels of maturity, what would you add to change management today? Like what's missing when you think about the practice, the profession, the focus, the tools, the templates, the process, what could be one thing that if the, you know, we as practitioners delivered in a different way or thought about differently could really enhance the value proposition for organizations to invest more heavily in change management capability uh, development within their teams or individuals or thinking about it in a different way. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, what I used to, absolutely when I used to uh, run the project management office at Children's Hospital, I always talked about, well, we have to change manage the change management effort. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to build the business case. So if there was mm -hmm. a, a magic wand, or if everybody, if all the change managers out there um, were to really kind of double down on articulating why change management is so important to the organization. I know, you know, organizations like ProSci and, and folks like that data. do a really good job of, um, yeah, making that case. But, you know, I think I'm not sure that message is getting to the right executives to right. say, yes, we we really need this to be a dedicated um function in the organization or de dedicated people and we're going to invest in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I so. agree with you. I mean, they, they do have incredible data and I've thought about, you know, what is missing from that data set, like the, the research that's out there. And there is a lot of conflicting opinions on the, the percentage of change projects that fail and what it means for the bottom line. And so maybe there's something else or for workers. So maybe there's something else that as change professionals, we can be thinking about how do we measure, how do we monitor, how do we evaluate this differently? So we can really crystallize the benefits to the organization via a business case that explains very clearly you know, what it means for that organization. So I'm with you on well, that. Well, I think there's, you know, I think there's two drivers for executives. One, one is it'll help, you know, financially. Mm -hmm. And two is it will um, help alleviate a pain that they're yeah. experiencing. Like, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, there, they, you know, there's some reason why, you know, maybe there's a, a lot of attrition or something mm. like that, that they're just like, what, like, what is happening? We have to change something. And that's going to be kind of what the driver is for um, investing more in change management. Yeah. But um, until, until there's some sort of um, uh, feeling or some experience around some of that, then yeah. I don't know that there's a lot of, um, a, a lot of focus on doing it doing the right thing, like doing yeah. change management to help change things the right way. Yeah. I am encouraged by what I'm seeing around worker well-being and resilience and how that aligns with organizational agility. So I think there is more to come there, but it's so new in so many ways, how, how, what I'm seeing and how it's all connected. Um, but I'm hoping more, more of that comes together so we can connect the dots more easily between what change, you know, change management, how it happens and the benefit for uh, employees and organizations. So, yeah, I was reading an article this morning about how LinkedIn, you know, change management is a big deal right now with the, you know, return to work kind of yeah. concept and um, how people are designing workspaces or work experiences. And I was reading this article that LinkedIn has basically revamped their whole, um, their whole office space to, um, to be more hybrid focused, be more uh, focused on different users and different yeah. stakeholder, different use cases, basically. And yeah, um, I really, I read that with a lens of change management and I really liked kind of, you know, their approach to it. So yeah. I think that's a really important one to think through um, and how, how the future state of work and worker well-being is. Absolutely. And how that can influence the success of change initiatives within the organization, because all change has to go through people to get implemented. So if your employees are happy 
where they're working, how they're working. Um, it's going to, you know, uh, benefit the organizations and improve their ability to, you know, execute strategically. So you'll have to send me that link. I'll share it in the share it in the show notes. Um, Jen, thank you so much for this conversation. I always learn from you whenever we connect. And so really appreciate uh, your generosity of time and wisdom. And if people wanted to connect, can they find you on LinkedIn? Should they look for vital solutions? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, So that'll, that'll, that's where you can find Jen Thompson. And um, yeah, thanks again. Really appreciate the time today. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Conversation. Definitely. Take care.